uh, first two chapters, the tutorial that you have done until tutorial three, right? So languages and also the first and second chapter. Okay, uh, during this hour, uh, actual time. So you need to prepare your own test pad, your own stapler. If you need calculator, you can bring. Because for the chapter one, some you need to calculate, right? Okay, and then whatever stationery you need, so you bring that on.
next one you have this theorem to say that what is a monoid so as i say if it is a semi group with the identity element then we will say that it is a monoid so previously you already uh, understand what is a semi group so now if it is a semi group and it has uh, the identity element also then we will say that it is a monoid so next time when i ask next time when i ask how to determine it is a monoid then you should answer don't ask the set given with the operator must be a semi group and we can get the identity from the set given then only it is a monoid okay so remember this ah huh? Now, a semi group that has an identity element is called a monoid. So, how do we want to determine the set of integer with class is a monoid? This one we already proved in the previous part that it is associative for class under the set of integer. So, here we don't show the associative here. Right? But if the question asks to determine this is a monoid, you need to start to show from associative. Because you need to show that it is a semi group first, and then you find the identity, then only you can conclude that it is a monoid. Okay? So here, what is the identity for plus? Set of integer with the operator plus. Can you find identity or not? What is the identity here? This one? Identity is zero, right? Now we must make sure that the zero identity it must belong to the set of integer. And then the second one, you have the integer positive with plus is also a semi group because we know that plus is associative. So it is a semi group. Uh, it is a semi group. Uh, fulfill the associative property, and this one plus just now we have found that plus the identity is zero, right? Is zero belongs to the set given here? Positive integer. Is zero considered as positive integer? No, right? So if zero is not belongs to positive integer, even though you can find the identity is zero, but in this case we cannot say that it is a monoid because the identity is not belongs to the set given. So this is why every time when you are able to find the identity, not necessarily is a it is a monoid. You must make sure that the identity must belong to the set given also. Then only you can say that it is a monoid. Okay? So all these conditions need to follow up. Huh? And the following one is a power set with union. Again, this one we know that union is associative. So to show associative, we just use the set A, union B, union C. Do associative, huh? A union B union C. This is to show that it is a semi group. So all this, of course, it will belong to the power set, huh?
identity, union A, get back A. So what is identity here? also belongs to the power set S, right? So in, the case, in this case, we will say that this uh, power set S with the union is a monoid yeah? because we are able to determine that it is associative and we can find the identity which belongs to the set also. That's why you can say that it is a monoid. Some 
tutorial group not yet finish our tutorial 3 so after I teach this you still need to remember how to do it so that you can do your tutorial 4 okay now the next example is 14 here now B is a set of 0 and 1 we want to define the binary operation this is what what is it operator huh? Still remember? Zero, zero is what? Zero. Zero? Zero, one? One. One. One, zero? One. One, one? Zero. zero. Okay, so this is for exclusive all, right? Is this associative? Exclusive all is associative or not?
in this case the identity will be the zero okay and the zero is belongs to b so this always need to determine ah. you need to make sure that the identity must come from the set given also so conclude that the set b with the exclusive or is a
you must write what is your A B C [ha] what is the identity so you can take any element from here let's say we take A plus zero equal to zero plus A equal to A right so you have this (uh) A zero zero A equal to A means that the identity is also belongs to integer. So the third one is you need to find the inverse. Now as I say, if let's say we let the a prime be the inverse, of A. So when we want to find the inverse, we need to make sure that we have A plus the A prime will be equal to the A prime plus A, which is equal to the identity. So the identity now is 0. What is A prime?
society grow, where it must be associative, and then you need to know how to find the identity, then only come to group. Okay? So you need to look back at the example just now. Eh? Now, for this one, when we have the multiply and the integer, we want to determine is this a group or not. So we need to start from multiply. Is it associative or not? Is multiply associative? Yeah. Okay. So we will have A multiply B multiply C which is equal to A multiply B multiply C for all the A, B, C belong to integer. So the first one we know that it is associative, right? Now, the second one is the identity. When we find the identity, we need to find A multiply the identity. You don't straight write zero first, huh? because now you need to find the identity in order that the answer is A. I know that I give the example A plus zero equal to A, and all of you will write A multiply zero equal to zero. Is it like that? What we want to find is the identity. It doesn't mean that it is fixed to zero every time for the identity. It will fix to the element you have here for the answer. The identity you need to find by yourself. Different operator will have different identity. But the same operator will have the same identity. Meaning that whenever you see the plus, if you say the identity is 0, so no matter the element here is A or B or C, as long as it is plus, the identity will be 0. Understand? But if you change the plus to multiply, then not necessarily it must be 0 anymore. So how to find the identity? You need to take A multiply the identity then the answer must be equal to A. The identity multiply. Why I write the answer? The identity multiply the A, it must be equal to A. Okay? So now the A will belong to integer. What is the identity here? Yes, one. Is 1 belongs to integer? Yes. Yes. Hurry up. So is this a monoid? Yes, right? <laughs> so the first one you have shown that it is associative, meaning that this set is a semi-group. The second one you show that the identity exists, it is a monoid. Then we come to the third one. To find the inverse, we need to have A multiply the inverse equal to what? See this? A plus the A inverse equal to 0. Now, do you put equal to 0? At the back here, it must be the identity, right? So, what is the identity in this class? What is the identity now? 1. So that means A multiply the inverse must be equal to 1. Then can you find the inverse? What is the A inverse? Huh? What is the inverse? A prime equal to? multiply the inverse, I get back 1. What is the A inverse? Huh? What is A inverse? Normal mathematics? 
becomes integer? No, right? So, 1 over a now is not belong to integer anymore. If the 1 over a is not belong to integer, can you say that the 1 over a be the inverse of this set given? Cannot. So, if the inverse is not in the set given, that means, is this a group? No. Okay. So, the conclusion is, the integer with the multiply is not a group. <coughs> So you need to know what is the reason, huh? Because of the inverse here, it's not belongs to integer. Thank you. 